let's move to, uh, to some exciting things, accounting, bookkeeping and payroll. So just some particular things I wanted to talk about here um, around uh, how easy this sort of stuff can be these days. Uh, probably many of you have heard of Xero. Uh, and in fact, it was at one of Michael's uh, presentations here down the Gold Coast that I actually really uh, learned about Xero. Before that, it had been a noise in the background and I thought, oh, I, something else to learn. Uh, but as soon as I saw it to begin with, I was absolutely hooked. Um, and, but Xero is not the only one. There is QuickBooks Online uh, and uh, MYOB have an online product as well in, in the small business space. Now sometimes when you're moving to franchise level, these may be too small anyway. Uh, but they certainly are, um, are very useful uh, at, at for a certain size. And actually not so much size, but it depends on the complexity of the business and how many different moving parts there are in it. What is particularly interesting is, um, is the application of Xero in franchising. And this is a quote that I found from the CEO of a business called IWS. And that's a bookkeeping business in Melbourne which specialises in, in franchising. And uh, they, on, in this particular interview that I watched with the, the CEO, he said that Xero is the best for the franchise space. Some of the reasons for that are the, the ability to plug in different applications that are called add-ons. Uh, and that's a little bit hard to see there, but here we've got reporting, point of sale, payroll and HR, inventory. And uh, we've seen many examples of uh, franchisors being able to, um, to have absolute oversight of how their franchisees' operations are going through the use of cloud software like Xero. Uh, there are various ways of doing that, uh, but you can actually see on a day-to-day -day basis directly into how your franchisees' businesses are going. And, and of course then have, uh, make sure that, that the reporting that you're getting is accurate. In fact, you can have direct control over the reporting through Xero. Let me just go back to this opening slide here and explain the other two pictograms that I've got there. There's one that, uh, that some of you may have heard of called Receipt Bank. Uh, and that's one of my favorite add-ons for Xero. It, is, uh, it saves a lot of time when it comes to, to data entry of supplier invoices and to tracking of, of receipts. It's um, possible to, uh, to, to scan an invoice, a supplier invoice, into Receipt Bank. And there are, there are different ways to get that information into Receipt Bank. Then through uh, optical character recognition, it will look at the, um, the, the invoice. It will pull out the data of the date of the invoice and the due date and the supplier name and the amount and the GST amount and pull that out into all separate fields and also store an image of the invoice. And then uh, once the bookkeeper is satisfied with the, the data that it's pulled out, hit a button to push it into zero as a supplier invoice ready to be paid. So that saves the data entry of uh, sitting there and, and entering in supplier invoices directly into Xero. But the other thing I really like is that because it, it doesn't only push the data into Xero, but pushes an image of the invoice as well. And, and I got this idea from when uh, our oldest daughter did a film and TV degree. One of her lecturers said that a digital file doesn't exist unless it's in three places. Uh, and, and that's been one of the, the hurdles of cloud accounting and cloud software generally is, is where I can't touch it and feel it. It's not on my local hard disk. It's not on my server. Uh, so this, this three copies, uh, three, three versions of it is, is for me the answer to that. So here at least we've got two. We've got uh, an image of your supplier invoice in Receipt Bank and an image of it in Xero that's been pushed across from Receipt Bank. So there are two copies of that invoice. If one fails, you've got the other one. And then, uh, then in different ways, it's possible to create that third copy as well. The tax office is certainly quite happy with, uh, with electronic copies of invoices these days. There's no need to keep the paper, uh, especially with a, a good combination of systems like this. The other thing about Receipt Bank is that um, it's possible just to, to take a photo of, uh, of, of those little invoices that you gather in your wallet or in your purse or your handbag. Uh, whether they're credit card or, uh, or cash, snap a photo of it, 
put it into Receipt Bank, there's the copy of it and it gets processed as well. Uh, so that's, that's extremely useful from a bookkeeping point of view. The other one there that I thought was worth mentioning is called Deputy uh, and it's an example of a, a rostering, uh, rostering application. That particular one is great for, um, uh, one example that I love is a, say an ice cream shop. So uh, they need to, to roster their staff on for various shifts. They need to predict the number of staff that they need. So there's two aspects to deputy. One is that it's really uh, flexible communication, publishing of rosters. Uh, and uh, I was amazed when, when one of our kids was working at a, um, at a local franchised uh, restaurant operation and he would need to phone up at the beginning of each week to find out his shifts. Uh, and then another one he worked at, they would send him an email at the beginning of each week. But with something like, uh, like Deputy, the team love it because they have a phone app themselves. They'll receive their roster for the week on the app. If they can't make a particular shift, they'll let their manager know that by clicking a button on the app. That goes straight back to the manager. Deputy then says, oh, okay, well, that particular person has some unique skills we need for that shift. Maybe they are the ones who, uh, they can close the till at the end of the shift. So a deputy will then say, okay, well, who else has those skills and is available? Uh, narrow down the list of, of staff based on that criteria and then give the manager the opportunity to choose somebody else to allocate that shift to. The other thing that deputy does is, uh, if it's relevant, is keep track of the weather forecast. So that's why I like the ice cream shop. Uh, deputy can say, well, base, and it links in point of sale, uh, point of sale software data, uh, point of sale system data. So in the ice cream shop, deputy can say, well, at this time of year, last year, this is how busy the shop was. The weather forecast for the next week is that it's going to be hot and sunny. So based on that combination of data, we think you need this many staff to be rostered on for that shift next week. So it's bringing some intuition, some artificial intelligence into the planning of, of, uh, of shifts and rostering. There's a whole host of other applications that are useful in different types of business that connect in with Xero and, and talk to each other as well. So related to accounting and bookkeeping, um, let's just touch on, on measuring performance and, and key performance indicators. And particularly when you're moving into the franchising space, uh, that's, it's really important to have a handle on what the benchmark numbers are going to be. Uh, and and you, you work that out from, from your own experience of, of operating the business. And then you have uh, measurement benchmarks <coughs> to apply to franchisees. And I mentioned before that with something like Xero, you've got the ability to see how all the franchisees are going. You can then uh, benchmark them against those standard uh, key performance indicators that, that you've set, uh, the expectations and you can benchmark different locations against each other on the KPIs that you choose as well. Uh, again, in the, in the uh, attachments that will come out in the email, I've got some examples of uh, KPI reports, particularly in relation to measuring different locations. And that's particularly useful when we're getting into, uh, the, into comparing different franchisee performance. Uh, I'm going to skip this one because I think it's a little bit less relevant uh, and also because there's a typo on this slide and uh, there's a calculation error. Uh, but break-even point, suffice to say, is a really important example of a KPI to work out uh, because then you know what level of sales you need just to cover the costs. Some other possible KPIs that are going to be relevant depending on the type of business that you have um, and, and some of these are what we would describe as non-financial KPIs because it's not all about the dollars, it's not all about the, those type of numbers. Uh, sometimes it's about other things as well and, and about then combining the dollars and these other measures. Uh, so how many people are entering the store? Uh, one, a, a great example I think of how long customers wait to be served is McDonald's. Uh, most of us have probably seen the, the timer countdown on the screens that they've got in their drive through so that they measure that and that data is constantly going back to head office from all of their different stores. 
Uh, different, the, the amount of sales for different product lines is really important. Uh, and again, being able to report on that from different locations or different franchisees is going to be valuable data. Oops. Uh, how many recurring customers? Uh, and in terms of recurring customers, uh, then uh, that presents marketing opportunities and, and how you can capitalise on their return custom. And uh, measurements like how much in wages per dollar of income that you earn, uh, and that can be, in various ways, that can be uh, tweaked, uh, can be firstly measured and, and tweaked. And that's saying what you, uh, what you measure you can manage is really important when we're looking at these sort of statistics.